Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Ham Radio Dude and thanks for checking out the channel. Today we're going to talk about and do an overview on a radio that was recently introduced to the Sherwood Report. And on top of that, it's a relatively inexpensive radio that will get you on HF. Now, this isn't a new radio to the market. In fact, there's been quite a few reviews on this already, uh, but I wanted to give my take on this, give you an overview of the radio, and I'm going to take a little more time on this episode where normally I do 15 minute episodes. I'm going to shoot for around 30 minutes this episode, but let's talk about the Shegu G90. Your source for amateur radio news, reviews, and tech overviews. This is Ham Radio Dude. Recently at a local ham fest, I picked up the G90 with an external fan that bolts onto the bottom of the radio, as well as a signal link, and it cost me $300. Now, I figured that $300 wasn't a bad deal, especially because this radio was in such good shape. In fact, it's essentially brand new. Uh, I want to go over a few things of this radio, so let's just take a look at it here real quick as I got it. Now, this is the front panel of the G90, and I apologize, there's a couple of fingerprints on the front of that screen there. But uh, what this radio does is it is an HF radio, so it will get you on high frequencies. And it does 20 watts out on 160 meters through 10 meters. Now, I should also mention that this does not do 6 meters. So if you're looking to get into 6 meters, you're not going to be able to operate with this radio. What I will say, though, is... 20 watts for 160 to 10 meters isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. There are some QRP radios that maybe only do 5 or 10 watts, and this is going to give you a step up from that. There are some features on this that are really cool, and I think are top of the line for what you're paying on this radio. Now, let's see what you would get this radio for new if you were to purchase it new. Taking a look at Radio Oddity, and I chose them because they are one of the main suppliers of these G90 radios in the United States. It's a G90 HF radio. It's a software-defined radio capable of QRP. I would not call this a QRP radio as 20 watts is typically not known as QRP. And this radio actually has a built-in automatic antenna tuner, which is really decent for the price that we're paying. Again, $435. We'll take a look at all this later. And then it has a remote head. And what a remote head does is it allows you to detach the faceplate. So you could mount the body of the radio maybe under your desk and have the head or just the faceplate of the radio on your desk, for example or in your car, wherever it might be. But the nice thing about this is, is it's a pretty compact size radio, so you could go take it out portable as well. Now they're saying it's about 1.6 kilograms and it has four extension handles. I will say that this radio does have some weight to it. And if we take a look here on the side of the radio, you have different uh, input ports here. So you have what they call a headphone interface and you could plug in your headphones and you can listen to HF there and not bug people around you with weird HF noises. And then a self-defining interface, which we'll take a look at here in just a bit. And if I continue on here, you're going to see that there's certain things that are included with this radio, such as the microphone. And this is a typical Shegu microphone. I got the same one with the 5105 that I recently purchased. It comes with this programming cable, as well as this power cable and the DB9 cable. Now, I don't think I got the DB9 cable with this radio. But for $435, let's take a look on the desk. What do we get? Here it is, the G90. And we're going to go over all, a lot of these features here in just a few moments, but I just want to do a one around here. So here's those little uh, handles, if you will, that are on the radio. And your, your standard G90 won't have this bottom thing, which we'll talk about in just a second. But this is the front of the radio. And if we move to the side, you'll see your microphone input. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and keep turning it around. You're going to see your antenna input as well as a spot for a keyer and a few other things and your DC in. Now this DC in is a, a weird type of connection as opposed to something you would typically see on like a Yezu, for example. Uh, I would have probably just done this directly as a power pull adapter, but the good news is, is you could buy a power adapter to a power pull adapter here for something like 1695, or you can make your own if you're ever so inclined. And then if we continue to turn this around again, this is an external piece, which we'll talk about here in just a second. But then you also have a spot on the side here for your headphone jack. So what is this bottom thing anyway? And why is it mounted on top? Well, there's a clip on the top of the radio here. And I'm trying to be very careful. But this clip, you could actually unclip it and take the bottom piece off. The bottom piece has a spot here for power out. And so you could either use a power pole connector or you could use the, the same kind of connector that was on the back of this radio here. Uh, but this is an external fan. And why I wanted to just wait a second until I talked about the fan here is, uh, well, there's also some stands on here, which I'll talk about in a minute. But when you turn this radio on and you power it on through here, 
it actually cools down the radio to keep the radio cool. And it's an external part or that costs about $69 as I understand. But here's what I wanted to kind of make you aware about. If you have the stand and you're operating, be careful. Now there is a solution for that as well. And here it is right here. The solution would be to 3D print a fan cover. So this is gonna go on here and uh, actually probably right there. And then you could actually screw in a couple of screws and then you have a fan cover so you don't chop your fingers off. Um, but anyway, this fan is an aftermarket part and it has this little stand here, which is kind of nice. And it, it allows you basically to keep your radio cool while operating. Again, as I mentioned, this radio is 20 watts. Let's turn it on and go over some of the features. First things first, when you have this radio, you got to plug it into the power on the side here, which I did. And then you're probably going to want to plug in your microphone. I'm going to turn this to the side here. You can see the microphone jack. And here is the microphone itself. Now, the cable that comes with the microphone is actually pretty kind of cool because if you needed an extended cable, you can just go ahead and make one with a Cat5 cable, for example. But what you're going to do is you're going to plug in the microphone and you'll hear that audible click. And then you're going to plug in your microphone to the microphone port of the radio. Simple enough. And like I mentioned, I have the power plugged in now. And this will be the part where you're going to want to make sure you have your antenna plugged into the back of the radio, which I do. First things first, we need to power on the radio. Now you could power on the radio by tapping the power button once or holding down the power button. It's going to have a little boot screen and it's actually going to show your call sign. And that was the individual I think I purchased this radio from. However, now we're in the main screen and I want to show you two things that you might have a problem with when you first get this radio. But first I want to mention that the screen doesn't look very sharp or crisp and that is actually a flaw of the camera. There you go. So the the screen itself is actually very crisp screen. I love the full color LCD screen and it seems to work really well. But what happens if you turn the radio on and you have nothing on here? I mean, you hear volume maybe? And I kind of just gave it away. You hear something but you don't see anything. Well, the odds are is you put this radio into a semi standby mode and tapping the power button again will actually bring it back to life or turning the radio back up. So for example, if you do anything, it'll turn the screen back on. Now your other problem you might have is you might have the volume all the way up, but you, you don't hear anything. And simply as you could see kind of right here, it's on the headphone portion. So you could switch between headphones and the, the external speaker just by or the internal speaker rather, just by tapping this button and then adjusting the volume left and right. With that being said, those are two issues you might run into and think your radio is broke, but it, it probably isn't. Now this knob right below here, this one right here, you can see now if I'm just strolling along, I'm changing the frequencies, but what if I wanted to shift the frequencies? So I was, I was fine tuning this a little bit more. Well, let me show you. Well, the answer is actually this knob right here. I would think that you would press this knob in since this has to deal with the frequency tuning, but that's not the case. So you would actually tap this knob here. And as I tapped it, you could see I shifted from 1.5 or 100 kilohertz down. Uh, so now I could shift here and I can go left or right. Uh, so if I wanted to get back in the handband, I would just keep tapping this until I see the 5 again. And now I can go 6, 7, 8, for example. And now I'm 1.840. But let's see, I needed to go to 3.05. And then I needed to even fine tune it a little bit more. I could do that. And I could actually see signals that might be in the general area. As you can see, there's a signal here. But, but we'll get to that in just a moment. But that's how you would fine tune this. Now, if you wanted to change the modes, I'm going to be very careful here. I can't actually lift this. If you want to change the modes, let me give you an overhead. All you would have to do on the top of the radio is hit the mode button uh, left or right. And that would change you from, like I say, lower sideband to upper sideband or FM or AM. But if you also want to change the bands, the buttons are here as well. So you would go from, for example, uh, 80 meters to 40 meters to 20 meters and so forth. So those, those buttons to change the modes and the bands are on top. Let's go ahead and switch back here to the normal camera. And the mode indicator is on the upper left-hand side. So if I were to change the mode right now, you'd see I'd go from CW to CWR, AM, lower sideband, and upper sideband. So I think I was an upper sideband actually, which we all know that when you're in 160 meters, if you're on voice, it's lower sideband. So I just corrected that. But if I wanted to change bands, then for example, I would go right or left. Now I'm on 
160 meters now, which is the lowest hand band. But if I hit left, it goes down to 10 meters. So as you can see, it, it shifts through and there's no like, oh, you can't go anything lower than 160. No, it just goes to, to just goes to 10 meters. So we now get an idea how to change the modes and the bands, which is really easy because it's on the top, adjust the volume, change it to headphones. We're getting an idea that this radio, once kind of understood, is really simple to operate. And the nice thing is Shegu actually has a cheat sheet on their website, uh, uh, some of the shortcuts that you'd want to use. Some of you guys might see the elephant in the room already, and there is a lot of options on here to understand. So let me just point out this E, 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 or dit, 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 dit kind of thing right here. I have some kind of CW encode, or excuse me, decode feature enabled right now. So it's trying to decode CW, which is pretty interesting. We'll get to that in just a few moments. Some of the other things here is you have your bandwidth. And how do you adjust your bandwidth? Well, remember this button I said I thought should actually shift the frequency adjustment? That actually, you could change in between certain options. So here, we're now adjusting our bandwidth. And as you could see, if I go clockwise, the bandwidth adjusts more narrow, which I think is kind of weird. I think it should be opposite. If you're going clockwise, it should it should make it wider. And if you're going clock counterclockwise, it should make it more narrow. But it's just the opposite here. So uh, some people at home might want to wonder, 2,900 down to 600, I think. 600. So there you go. Uh, again, go ahead and set it to what you'd want for voice, uh, you know, 20, 2,400, right? And then if I were to tap that button again, uh, I could now have another option, which is kind of like a contour adjust, I believe. And I haven't played with this too much right here. Find a good spot for it. And again, hit it again. Now it says bandwidth again. And then there we go. So how do I get back to frequency adjustment? Well, you have to hit it one more time. And then there you go. You got your frequency adjustment. So. That is how you would adjust your bandwidth, your contour, and your, again, your frequency and switch between the two is hitting this button right here. If you wanted to change between VFOA and VFOB, there's a knob right here and it's, it's hard to see in my screen and I understand that, but it says A slash B and it is a VFO adjustment. So all of a sudden we went from VFOA to VFOB and VFOB is now indicated on the top here and what frequency I was on. So that's kind of nice to be able to rapidly switch between two frequencies, two bands, for example. And I wonder even two modes. So right now we're in lower sideband. I know that's not a, a ham band, guys. But boom, and it goes to upper sideband and then back to lower sideband. So that's a really nice little quick feature there to have multiple VFOs or multiple frequencies that you could rapidly go A and B, A to B, A to B. And there's a lot of useful reasons for that option to be actually enabled which is which is cool but we're back on vfoa let's get back into the handband in fact let's go to 40 meters i went ahead and i tuned up on 40 meters now i'm going to show you how to tune up first off you want to enable your tuner you tap this tune button that's right here after you tap the tune button you're going to notice that this little icon above the zero enables or turns on it doesn't mean that it's automatically tuned it if you wanted to tune and I'm not going to do it because there's a conversation going on, but you would hold down the tune button. I will say that the antenna tuner on the G90 is pretty good. I'm operating right now with an antenna that has a really poor standing wave ratio on 40, and the G90 handled that tune no problem. So a lot of people say that the G90 uh, CW decode doesn't work, but look at this. Have a good afternoon. S my CO. Uh, congrats on your up I think it's gonna say upgrade upcoming and whatever but look at that the CW decode does work here I'm in CW mode I tuned up I'm sitting here listening to a, a QSO and I'm gonna see the signal strength down here as well as the S meter is adjusting but uh, 73 WB4 OFT -E 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 4 but uh, I'm not the best at CW at I'm learning I'm actually doing really well that's not the point of this video <laughs> However, you could see that the CW decode feature does actually work on this radio. So cool. I'm pretty excited so far. And I want to explain the CW decode just a little bit better for you. Right now you have CW decode on here, but you don't always want that enabled, especially if you're in sideband mode, upper sideband, lower sideband, whatever it might be. Even if you're in CW mode, you might not want CW decode because maybe you're really good with uh, CW and you'd rather see a waterfall display. There's a button here on the right-hand side that says key, and I'm doing my best to point to it. 
Now, this key button, if you hold it down, it disables CW decode mode, and now you can see your waterfall display on the bottom of the screen. Now, that's really useful and that's nice. So, what we are going to do though is we're going to re enable it for just a moment. So, I'm going to hold it down, and, and here it is. Now, I'm so inclined to show you that you might just, as ICOM would say, get a bunch of ease. Well, that's because you've got to make some adjustments here. First, we've got to find a frequency that has actually some kind of coding or keying going on. The next thing we have to do is we have to tap the key button and you're going to see words per minute 25. I know this could be a difficult thing because especially if you don't have the the capability of understanding how many words a minute are actually being produced, you don't know whether to go up or down. But eventually what you're going to do is you're going to find the right speed and you might see an indication here that you're getting close. Now this signal might be a little weak, so maybe we should, should change frequencies. So you can see here, I'm starting to get some indications here. And I'm going to hit back on the key. And I'm going to adjust it. And we should start to see D, E, K, 4, U, A, X, P, S, E, K. So we're starting to see letters now. C, Q. CQ, CQ, from, or of, D4U, XE. I'm assuming this is a, I believe, a German station, and don't, don't hate me if I got that wrong. My whole point is, is you could use this key option here to change your speed, words per minute. And once you do that, it won't be a bunch of E's. It'll actually be logical or legible text on the CW decode. I hope that cleared up your CW decode questions that you might have. And again, if you want to disable CW decode, just hold it down and you're going to go back to your waterfall display. Now I should probably also note that the speed in which you set your words per minute is also going to be your transmit speed. So once you plug in a key or that's what you're going to be keying at. CW decode works great. Uh, I'm still not great or proficient with CW. So I'm not even going to give that a shot. Um, but I will say that CW decode on this actually does work well. And I realized that you couldn't hear the actual audio quality via the headphone jack in those recordings. So let me go ahead and give you an example now. There are a few other things I want to show you about this. And to show you these, I went into 40 meters lower sideband or voice. Now I'm going to give you a voice demonstration in just a moment, but a couple things to take in consideration. If I disabled the antenna tuner or the matcher, uh, and then I could actually know right now that my antenna is not being matched at all. There's a couple things I could do. I could actually scan the whole spectrum or the band to see what the standing wave ratio is across the band. And to do that, you hold down the POW button or power button. And you can see I'm pretty high around four to one. To exit out of it, you just hit this VM button. And I mentioned this VM button because I think the manual said that you hit the tuning sequence again, which would be the tune button, but that's not necessarily the case. So anyway, uh, if I were to tune up at this point, I'm now tuning up. And if I were to hit that button or hold it down again, POW, you can see my standing wave ratio is now a lot lower. So this thing does a pretty good job of matching. I'm going to go ahead and quit. Uh, now that we've done that, I do want to also mention that if you tap the power button, you can go from one watt to 20 watts and vice versa. So it's really nice to be able to have a quick access to be able to adjust your power, actually to look and see the spectrum of what your standing wave ratio is, have this built in automatic antenna tuner. And uh, you could also set your threshold here by tapping the power button once again. You could say, hey, don't accept a standing wave ratio greater than 2.8. Don't accept one that's greater than 3.6 or match it better than 3.6. Match it better than 1.8. And then if you tap it again, you get back to your bandwidth that you could adjust. I think that's a very useful feature to know uh, because a lot of people will want to use those couple of features. 
Of course, you could always lock the radio like I just did. I hit that lock button on the bottom. But wait, it's not doing anything, right? No, it's, it's one of those things, again, where that's adjusting the brightness of the screen or the dimness of the screen. And then to lock it, you have to actually hold it down and you'll see the lock button that comes on there. Now nothing will happen, which is really nice. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and unlock this by holding it down again. And then I can now make things brighter or dimmer. So there's a lot of cool features there that are, are very useful. Uh, you'll notice there's an automatic gain control that's enabled right now. And I have it set to auto. But if you wanted to change that, you could just tap on the AGC button on the bottom of the screen here. I now want to give you an example of how this thing sounds on sideband via the headphone jack enabled. I'm going to do my best at this point to make a couple more points. Down here in the bottom left hand side of the screen, you have a couple options. If you tap this pre button, you're going to enable your preamp. I'm going to leave that disabled for the sake of this tutorial. But what just happened is when I tapped it again, I actually tapped it into the attenuation mode. So I might actually leave attenuation enabled, but let's just go ahead and check it out plain. Uh, also, I told you already how to adjust your bandwidth. I'm going to leave mine at 2400 for the sake of this demonstration with the automatic gain control on. Let me go ahead and turn this on, and this should be as natural as possible, as again, I've disabled the filters on my mixer board as well as in my computer. Yeah, they're eating up Lugano and... Uh... I did not test the current draw on this radio. There's some research online that says on receive it's 500 milliamps and on transmit it's up to 8 amps. Uh, however, I did not test that. I just kind of went over this radio, showed you a demonstration of it. Maybe you're interested in it. Unfortunately, though, this is where I have to say goodbye to this radio and get rid of it. Uh, not a dramatic pause there. Why, why doesn't he like this radio? I never said I didn't like it. I actually love this radio, and it's unfortunate I have to get rid of it. But with all things here, I do these YouTube videos and I do these reviews and it gets really costly. I have to sell this radio so I can fund another radio to do another review and hopefully get some views. With that being said, I'm asking you today that if you really enjoyed this video, if you like what I had to offer, if you see potential in what I had to offer and show you today, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and most importantly, maybe sharing this video with others so that I can gain a subscriber base and maybe one day keep one of these radios. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, I'm Ham Radio Dude. Thanks for checking out the channel 73.